Imagine that one day you are diagnosed with a terminal illness, treatable by medication. The price of your medication is manageable at a dollar per pill and stays manageable for the next five years, but suddenly the price of your pills begins to rise, and increasingly fast. By year five, you're paying $13 per pill, and by year six, you're being charged a whopping $750 per pill. What do you do? This may sound like an outlandish hypothetical situation, but this is the reality for thousands of U.S. citizens. The drug of focus in this particular case is called Daraprim, a treatment for the life-threatening illness toxoplasmosis. For many years, a company called Turing Pharmaceuticals was the only producer of Daraprim and sold their drug for a dollar per pill, a price considered reasonable by many users and their insurance companies. Then in 2014, they hired a new CEO named Martin Shkreli. Shkreli saw Turing's monopoly on this life-saving drug as an opportunity for profit and raised the price by 5,000% literally overnight. This was clearly an issue. In 2015, Patrick Rice, a user of Daraprim, was forced to switch to a different drug because his insurance decided $750 per pill was too much. But because Turing had the monopoly on that specific formula of drug, his new medication was far less effective and his health began to rapidly decline. He therefore had to switch back to Daraprim and somehow come up with the money. He isn't the only example of this, and this isn't the only case of pharmaceutical companies raising their prices without any warning for their consumers. According to research done by medical journalist Jeffrey Lawrence, each of the four top producers of prescription drugs in the U.S. have raised their prices between 400 and 5,000 percent over the past three years. How can they do this? A lot of it has to do with these large companies' ability to create near monopolies on their products. For example, in 2014, Solvay Pharmaceuticals began producing the drug Androgel. Soon after it was released, several smaller companies began producing cheaper, generic versions of the same drug. Salve wanted to keep this competition off of the market, so they began what is called a reverse payment agreement. This agreement stated that in exchange for several million dollars, these generic companies would not produce the drug. Because they were successfully able to keep the generic versions off the market, Salve was the sole provider of the drug, and was thus able to charge any price, simply because their consumers had nowhere else to go. This payment agreement was actually deemed legal when the case eventually went to the Supreme Court, paving the way for other pharmaceutical companies to do the same. And they have. According to a Mayo Clinic study over the past eight years, the price of certain steroid inhalers increased from $15 to $150 each, the price of EpiPens increased from $50 to $200 per pen, and annual costs of cancer drugs increased from $10,000 to over $100,000 per year. So what are the patients supposed to do? Many are forced into financial distress simply because short of moving to another country, there's no way to get these medications for cheaper. It is important to note that pharmaceutical companies show that their high prices are justified by the excessive costs of research and development that go into drug production. Consumers often ignore this fact, but we have to acknowledge it so we can examine exactly what these costs are and what a fair price for both pharmaceutical companies and their consumers would be. Research so far has shown that even when accounting for research and development costs, many prescription drugs are still largely overpriced. So let's fix this. Be aware, understand the legalities which allow for these monopolies, and advocate for new legislature, which is able to stop the payment agreements which allow wealthy companies to pay off their competition. Together, we can help start a new precedent for prescription drug prices that benefits everyone.